he has risen. He has risen indeed. I am so happy to hopefully be meeting with some of you this Sunday for Sunday School again. Um, everyone else, if you happen to find this video, um, I'm glad that you're able to hopefully find some encouragement and some um, new ideas to dive into. So our Sunday School class school class has been going through the book of Luke and actually I had somebody offer and ask to lead our Sunday school class. So Pastor Dakota Vales is going to teach our class on Sunday and it's not from Luke. It is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 35 through 49. It's on the resurrection. So um, in good Easter spirit, Easter's not a single day people, in good Easter spirit we're going to learn a bit more about the resurrection. Um, I don't know what Pastor Dakota is bringing to us. Um, so for this video, I just want to give an overview um, of First Corinthians again, which I'm not starting in chapter one. I'm going to focus on chapter 15 on the resurrection. Um, but I wanted to recommend a video and I'll put the link um, below here. And so it's from the Bible Project. And it's their video on 1 Corinthians. It's eight, nine minutes long. It's really cool, super informative. And um, a lot of my ideas I'm gonna share actually come from the video. So let me go ahead and start us with prayer and then we'll go ahead and get into the scripture. Dear God, we thank you for the privilege that it is to have these letters from Paul, and we thank you for the life that he lived as one of your first missionaries uh, to the Gentile world. Um, thank you for the way that they're still able to connect with us today. As many of us are um, feeling a little trapped in our homes, may we feel encouraged and strengthened by Paul's example, even though he was distant from this church in Corinth, he still was able to minister to them. May we have the courage to minister to those around us in creative ways that are safe and healthy, but are faithful to the calling you have put on all of us to go and make disciples. Allow your spirit to be with us wherever we are, whatever time it is for us, dear God. We thank you for this time. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and start for us. We are going to um, read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 through 49. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life and let it, unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he is determined. And to each kind of seed, he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies, but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another and the stars another and stars differ from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It is raised in raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven, as was the earthly man. So are those who are of earth. 
and as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So right before this passage, we actually hear from Paul reiterating um, essentially that the gifts we are given, the graces we are given, um, are to actually build everyone up in love. Um, the beautiful example of the bodies given. We need eyes, we need hands, we need toes, we need belly buttons, we need everything um, in order for that body to function. Um, and we need the whole body to function so that the true work of love can be done. And so now here we are with the resurrection. And apparently some people are saying, it doesn't matter. It's a silly idea. How in the world could somebody be raised from the dead? Um, and maybe it just doesn't matter. And this is the type of thing I imagine hearing today still. Um, Jesus can be seen as a great person, did good things, loved well, was a kind soul. Um, but to raise from the dead, that's just a little far-fetched. Um, also, what's the big deal? Let's just say he was human, had a good life. Um, well, as Paul would put it, um, all of it is a big deal. It's a huge deal. It's a game-changing deal. It matters. Um, there were witnesses to him dying on that cross. And not only that he died, but that he was stabbed just for good measure to make sure he was dead which fulfilled a prophecy, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, so there's plenty pointing to Jesus was good and dead. Um, just, it happened. He got wrapped. He got oils. Like, um, it, well, I guess he didn't get oils. The women went to do that. Anyways, he got a cheap burial from the Romans. He was dead. Put it in a tomb. Big rock pushed in front of it just for good measure. Um, and so there are witnesses to that. There were also witnesses that that giant rock that was pushed in the front for good measure rolled away somehow. Um, but then on top of it, he was gone. That was one of the big deals when the women came and said that Jesus wasn't there. One of the reasons the disciples potentially panicked or had a lot of feelings, was, well, somebody obviously stole the body. Um, which, let's be real, most logical minds would go to that. They want to be, oh, he got up and walked. Um, or whatever the case is. Like, I don't know the details of how Christ got out of that tomb, but I know he got out of that tomb. I just, I just do. Um, I hope that's enough for you. We can talk about that later. Um, but the thing is, so we have witnesses to, that, to the fact that Christ was out of that tomb after he died. Many. There were Jews, there were non-Jews, women, men, slaves, non-slaves. Jesus was alive. And so we have a man that died, plenty of witnesses. And then after that, a lot of people saw him again. He, he rose from the dead. There's another passage actually in Luke. Yeah, Luke. I read it last week um, or the last time I did the video from Luke. Um, they make Christ eat something. Well, Christ asks to eat something. It's to prove he's not a ghost because ghosts can't eat things. They would just fall through them. There was a movie when I was a kid that had a ghost. It was Ghostbusters um, that ate a bunch of stuff and it just like fell right through him because he's a ghost. Um, for whatever reason, that's what ghosts are known for. And so Christ was not a ghost. Christ rose again in a body. And it matters because if Christ never died, then Christ never rose again. We're in real trouble. That means we are still lost. We are still fully responsible for our sins. Like, there is no hope there. Um, well, what we understand is hope. Um, what we understand is repentance um, is wrong. 
it doesn't matter. Um, we've been doing it wrong for thousands of years. And if that is the case, then we should potentially just throw in the towel. Um, it's pretty hopeless, and even as I say it. Um, but the thing is, is I do think Christ rose, and it's because of the resurrection, we have hope. We have a reason to live the best lives we possibly can, which is what Paul's been getting at throughout the um, first bit of this letter, is it matters how we treat our bodies and how we treat others. It matters what we put into it. It matters how we interact with the world around us. Because the reality is we need to be able to keep Christ as that cornerstone, as that center. And if we start to forget that, if we start putting ourselves first or other things, other gods, we're missing the point. And as the video put it, the resurrection makes the gospel an announcement about Jesus and this whole new reality that is now possible. And so in terms of chapter 15 and the verses um, Pastor Dakota is going to get at with us, this is victory over death. That's the game changer. That's the part of the new reality. Victory over death. If we don't have to be afraid of death, what's holding us back? So that's what I have for us this week. Um, I'm excited to see what Pastor Dakota brings to us. Go watch that video. Again, it's eight, nine minutes. It's um, the Bible Project on 1 Corinthians. Um, I highly recommend their um, their channel. Their stuff's really good. Um, you may also check out um, um, John Wesley's um, has um, his last name, but he I'll put it in the comments too. But he has where he did like um, his opinions on scripture. It's not a commentary, but. Um, he did it for um, First Corinthians, and so um, his bit for First Corinthians 15 is pretty good, I think, um, and talks about why it matters, um, what's going on. Um, so yeah, so go ahead, look at this scripture in the big story. Look at this scripture as the Corinth church would have been seeing it. They obviously are thinking some things potentially in disagreement with what the um, Christian church believes. Um, you may also go look at the Apostles' Creed um, and the Nicene Creed. They're going to deal with the Trinity as well, which this will deal with because um, Christ was able to rise from the dead because he's God. So we get into some Trinity stuff. So again, I don't want to steal Dakota's thunder. I have no idea where he's going with it. So um, go read, study. I look forward to seeing some of you on Sunday. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them here. I miss seeing you in person, but you are prayed for, you are seen, you are loved. Go in peace, friends.